Welcome to this episode of Engineering Success Profile Editions. Today we're joined by the amazing Shuk Elatar. Shuk is recognised as one of the top six young women engineers in the UK and was named the BBC List 100 Most Influential Women in the World in 2018. Uh, today Shuk is going to talk to us about her role as an electronics engineer. Uh, so hi Shuk, uh, thank you for being a special guest and welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, I'm so excited. Hi Great. everybody. It's great to have you here. Can you can we start with you know what initially attracted you uh, to a to a career in electronics? Yeah, sure. So to everybody who doesn't know, <laughs> I've just said that, <laughs> um, thinking it was recording. Um, so I was just saying that I didn't I didn't actually know that it was called electronic engineering. I just thought it was magic and. Um, <laughs> I remember when I was really young, kind of, kind of watching my TV and thinking that there's small people living inside it. You know, <laughs> back then when the TVs were huge and there could have big, actually yeah, been yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a tiny person living inside it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I realised that it's, it's just a machine built by people like me, I was just so mind blown. I wanted to be able to make that magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So your route into an engineering was, was, was not easy. Uh, can you explain more about your route into engineering and the challenges that you faced? Sure, I guess um, I guess compared to British people it wasn't. Um, so I came to the UK as a child refugee yeah. um, and uh, I, <laughs> like I said, I was obsessed with electronics and I used to take everything <laughs> apart. Uh, so I was super excited to like be studying electronics at university and um, I studied everything that would allow me to do so and I studied really hard so I was supposed to be at university at just 16. Right. Um, yeah so I was so excited to not just study kind of a male dominated field but but be one of the youngest to ever do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I finished my A-levels and I applied to universities and I realised that I couldn't go to university not because I was incapable, I had the right A-levels, I had the right results I was way ahead of my peers, but because I was an asylum seeker. Right. Uh, so for many years, I couldn't actually go to university, uh, which was difficult and it really impacted my mental health. Um, and that's why when I found out that I can be a STEM ambassador yeah. without studying engineering, yeah, I just yeah, yeah. jumped at the opportunity <laughs> and I was like, hey, kids, like, um, I'm not allowed to study engineering, but I can teach you about it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then um, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited because um, I joined a student campaign called um, Equal Access with Student Action for Refugees um, and it gives, um, it makes universities have equal access uh, to higher education for asylum seekers and yeah. right now as we talk, I think it's been successful at about 75 really? universities in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know, it's so exciting. So it's yeah. just, um, it's just, it's an incredible feeling to know that in the UK there are people who were only able to study engineering because of a campaign yeah that yeah, I led. It's yeah, just so yeah. Empowering. yeah yeah it's brilliant isn't it yeah yeah so so what what skills do you think are needed to be uh, to be an, an electronics engineer <laughs> to be a magician <laughs> yeah <laughs> um that's a good question I think um I I actually personally I really just think having the enthusiasm is is the most important skill, wanting to learn about it. Yeah. Um, and I don't want people to be discouraged from accessing engineering who've maybe traditionally not had very high scores in maths or, or physics because that's not the only way you can learn these subjects. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people are more hands-on and, are, you know, kind of going down the polytechnic um, route or, or, or the um, internship, apprenticeship routes. Yeah. Um, I think would work for a lot, a lot of people. So we need to tap into that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so today, what does your what does your role entail? I get to transform people's lives for a living. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it is cool. Yeah. So I work for this super cool startup called um, LB. Right. Uh, and we're a very small electronics team. So I get to do everything. I get to do the schematics. So kind of design the electronics itself but also do the layout so kind of right. decide where the electronics go on the board yeah um and then do all the testing but not just not just that do do the do the programming as well but for example if if i need to test my machine so let's say i need to life test the button i will build and design and program a robot 
that literally pokes oh. this button <laughs> as many times as possible until it breaks. So, right, yeah. that's, that's amazing. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's it really is. exciting. It's yeah. lovely see, being able to kind of see the whole process from start to finish because I feel um, in, in bigger companies, you're kind of removed from that. You specialize in one thing, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. great for some people. But for me, I just love, love being able to see the whole process yeah. and be, be so embedded in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so your engineering journey so far has, has been pretty incredible. Um, could, you share, <laughs> could you share with us some of the amazing projects that, that you've been involved with in engineering? Oh, Jamie, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I think, um, I think my proudest project is um, my master's thesis. Yeah. Um, so for my master's, I built a machine uh, that can detect organic materials. So, for example, some cancers based on electron, magnetic, electron quantum spin. Uh, so it's um, a technology called electron spin resonance. I'm not sure if you've heard, maybe you've heard of MRI, no, for example. Yes, MRI, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of similar. So with MRI, you are vibrating the water molecules, but with ESR, you're exciting the electrons themselves. Right. And that's then how you can kind of detect what kind of, what kind of organic compounds you're looking at. Right. Uh, so that's been kind of cool. Uh, so I miniaturize a machine that usually fills a whole room, costs hundreds of thousands of pounds, if not millions of pounds, into one meter square and costs like 300 pounds to make. So that was really <laughs> exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, what other cool things have done. So I've um, built a, uh, I joined some surgeons and I built a system that helps with eye surgery. Um, at uni, I built a car and raced it. Y'all should join Formula <laughs> Students. Build your cars and race it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic, it really is. <laughs> so, so, so do you think, uh, as engineers, we, we need to continually try to, to push the boundaries and, and evolve ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis? I think that's what engineering is. That's what innovation is. It's always trying to find the next, the next thing. How do I improve yeah. this? How do I utilize what already exists and engineer it in a way that creates new usages so for example actually the the machine that i talked about the esr machine that i talked about that yeah. um uses electron quantum spin um everything almost everything i used in that machine existed it's it's knowing what is there yeah, and yes, and yeah. knowing how to apply it so yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah so so what's the most challenging part of being a, an electronics engineer <laughs> um i would say the culture um right. it's not not the engineering itself i think the culture i find myself in uh, you know time and time again i find myself in meetings or even even whole conferences full of people who look nothing like me and it's really just um you know it just makes you think why and and i feel you know like we were talking before before this recording jamie and 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 um diverse team don't just you know it's not just the nice thing to do it's actually the smart thing to do it's yeah. the research shows that diverse teams outperform those aren't so yeah. why why aren't we there yet yeah 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 it's a good question <laughs> so so for you what's the most rewarding part of your job Ooh, what's the most rewarding part of my job I just really love working on something and maybe spotting somebody using it and be like, right. point at it and be like, hey, you know, I made that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I really yeah. love that. And um, for the tech that I work on right now, I just love reading the reviews. So um, uh, I work in femtech. I make technologies that um, improve the lives of uh, cisgender women and transgender men. So anybody with a stereotypically female anatomy. Um, and just reading the reviews of how it transforms people's lives is, is just so, so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what advice would you give to a future electronics engineer? Hmm. What advice would I give to future electronics engineers? I think, um, maybe I can't say this enough actually, um, at different points of my life I've, I've, I've felt like I've had to be a certain type of person to, yeah. to, to be successful in engineering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just not true. And it's hard to see. It's really hard to see because everybody around you is that kind of person. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but honestly, just you don't have to fit into a mold to, to, to be successful in engineering at all. In fact, it could be your weapon. It could be what distinguishes you yeah, yeah. from other yeah. people. So, yeah. 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 So, you know, it's important to, to attract more talent into engineering. We spoke about this earlier and into STEM careers, uh, especially women and people from underrepresented groups. What would your message be to them? Um, to say again. <laughs> what would your message be to people, you know, to women and to underrepresented groups who were, who were maybe looking to get into engineering, but, you know, were maybe, were maybe, you know, a bit scared of, of getting into it. What would your message be to them? Oh, somebody who's a bit scared into getting into engineering. I just, um, I feel, I think maybe I touched a little bit on that earlier. I feel the way we um, describe engineering is just not suitable for, for a lot of people. A lot of people, you know, when people think of engineer, they think a man, hard hat, and, and you know, these kind of engineers exist, absolutely, but it's just so varied you know when i tell people that i work in femtech that i make technologies for women and that that's like that's electronic engineering people are kind of like wait what like i didn't think yeah, yeah. you can do that so i just um my advice is to let them know or, or find out for yourself just how varied it is you know you can <laughs> you can do it in your heels yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i mean I, I personally think this is a great time for engineering why do you feel that this is the best time to be part of engineering? Huh. Um, I'm not sure this is specifically the best time. I think it's a really great time because I think the best times are yet to come, yeah. but being involved now means you are creating those best times that are best yeah. to come. So that's why I think it's really important to be involved now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shruk, that's it. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. It was great to speak to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, that was great. Thanks for having me.